so uh, it's what's power bi so power bi is a bi tool that microsoft has built for visualization purposes and uh, it has the powerful it has the powerful uh, way to convert our data which we get from multiple sources like data we have in databases we have data in csv file json file uh, excel files and all the different formats that we deal with on day to day basis and it can power bi can combine these data sources and can you know uh, give us insights and converts that data into a useful information which helps businesses for decision making and their important day to day works oh. okay so uh, in this uh, you know image what we're trying to see that in an excel file how the data looks like but when we present it in an rbi format how it can you know gives you know within a fraction of seconds we can see that information in such a different way when we want to see that uh, region wise data or we want to some see some categories uh, let's say in 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 our country how many states have some deficiency in any particular uh, in any particular uh, area so if we want to see it in the data it's very difficult it's very time consuming to see such information but visualizing it it helps the user and saves a lot of time and uh, helps uh, businesses also to do take those decisions quickly okay okay and uh, why power bi because there are so many tools in the market why we are opting for power bi why it is so much uh, you know uh, famous these days and a lot of companies are adopting it there are uh, strong reason behind that because power bi is a microsoft application so it can it can support a lot of data sources which are not supported by a lot of bi tools so there are a lot of uh, uh, bi tools in the market like uh, ibm has its own sap has its own and uh, there are click view tableau but power bi is a leading one in today's world so oh really it's not it's not it's not tableau Tableau is number two. Uh, I'll show you that graph, but it is very close competitor. Power BI and Tableau are very close competitor. Okay. So, uh, interactive UI features, so a lot of features. So, because it's a Microsoft application and Microsoft has its own uh, applications like Excel and which users are very familiar to. So a lot of uh, features that are provided within Power BI are based on what we have used in Excel. So it is very adaptive for users to use uh, Power BI. When you know users start using it, they don't find it very difficult in the first go to use it. But at the same time, when we learn different bi tools it's very important that we don't you know try to relate one bi tool to the other ones the the end goal might be the same we're trying to achieve the same goal but the ways that we achieve those features are completely different uh, depending on the tools we're using okay so we are trying to you know when we are trying to learn power bi and we are trying to use parameters and we are trying to compare those parameter you know setting up things with a tableau parameter set of things then it we might mix up a lot of you know if you confuse ourselves uh, in, in some ways so it's better that when we are trying to learn one tool we need to you know don't think about how other tool is working that's what my my suggestion would be yeah uh, and uh, since uh, Microsoft has its own Azure cloud platform, Azure, so it has uh, a lot of companies are now easily able to migrate their on-premises data to Azure since it has a very good integration with all other applications within Azure. Right, and... Uh, it's a, it, it, it provides us real time analytics. It has a, you know, there are scenarios where we need to uh, provide real time data, like the sports uh, we see in the, you know, on TV, where there we see that, you know, there, 
players are playing it and at the same time we see that on the in the graph format on the tv right it's quite real time that we see it. So there are many scenarios where we need to uh, show data to the business in the real time. So Power BI has that capability to show that real time data in a quicker manner and in a very uh, seamlessly. Okay, moving on to the next slide. So advantages. So it's the, uh, it's like, uh, how Power BI is 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 use, uh, useful for the for the users? How Power BI is useful for the per, uh, to the to the uh, person who is uh, actually building those dashboards, and how it's uh, beneficial for the businesses? So it's it's uh, interface is quite user friendly. When we work on Power BI, it is quite adaptive and easy to use. It has a, as I discussed some of the points, that it has a very good integration with other Microsoft applications like uh, you know SQL Server, cloud-based applications. So when when companies migrate from on-premise to cloud, it is uh, quite easy for them to migrate their on-premise uh, Power BI to to the to the Azure Power BI. Yeah. And uh, customizable dashboards. So users can create customized dashboards. So in Power BI, we uh, the word that we use dashboards is different from what we uh, use dashboards in Tableau. So in Power BI, we call it reports, right? Okay. The word dashboard in Tableau is similar to what we say reports in Power BI. So when we create reports for the users and let's say there are four reports that we have created uh, for one business like uh, there let's say for HR department so there is a headcount report there's an attrition report there is a hiring related report that we have created so three different reports but let's say um, hiring uh, this HR head needs to see three different views which are available in three different uh, reports in one view so they can just uh, create customized dashboard which will which will have the information about three different visualization just specifically for uh, their purpose so they can do it their way whatever they want based on the existing reports that they have is it any questions on this one we'll do it practically as well but yeah just to give you a glimpse that uh, uh, users can have their own customizable dashboards other than what they have readily available as reports. So they can do that. Okay, and uh, real-time data. So we already discussed this point. So um, going to the next point, collaboration. So Power BI allows users to share their dashboards and reports with others. So it's like uh, they, they can subscribe to them and they can share it further. They can ask questions. It's very interactive to use Power BI dashboards, which we'll see it in the latest, later sessions. So here's the architecture of Power BI, where uh, we we have Power BI Desktop, where we do the actual you know development uh, of Power BI reports. We have different uh, on the top. We can see that we have data sources from different area like Salesforce, Excel and SharePoint, CSV files, Azure. So all these data sources can be combined and can be you know, brought in uh, Power BI desktop and use, utilized to build those reports. And uh, to publish them, we have this cloud-based application, which is called Power BI Service. So it's, it's a, a URL that we can use and we can see our published reports on the Power BI service portal. And if you see that we have this Power BI gateways. So gateways are actually work as a, as a support between, and it works with both Power BI desktop application and Power BI service, and to help encrypt and decrypt the data that we use on Power BI service. 
So let's say we are using our SQL Server uh, data from our, you know, organized for one of the reports. And we have those ID passwords that we have used it. So for, and we publish the data as well on Power BI service. So gateways help us to publish that data on the Power BI service. Right, so we'll, it's a uh, it's a on premise application which we need to install on our system. So we'll be doing that installation part as well. So I'll guide you how to install a gateway, how to install Parway Desktop on our on your system. So once this uh, introduction part is over today, we can move to the installation part, and you can see that you know we are good to start with the practical part from tomorrow. Okay, and then once we have published our reports and we have dashboards available on the Power BI service, users can view them on their, you know, on this uh, URL that they have. And uh, they, all, they can also access those reports and dashboards on their mobile. So there's a mobile app as well. And also Power BI dashboards and Power BI reports can also be embedded in some customizable uh, uh, customizable applications that uh, let's say there is an application uh, within the organization. Let's say there's a medical uh, department uh, who provide all the details of medical services that they provide and all the appointments related details on the doctors related uh, details and in in their you know different tabs that they provide on that application in one of the uh, tabs they can also provide some analytics that you know how their business is doing so and they can provide access to that tab to the you know um, to the users whom they want to give access to that dashboard so it's like embedding that dashboard in their application as well using that embed link so there is a link that they can use and same can happen for tableau as well so powerway can also be embedded like this any questions uh, related to powerway architecture no no questions now okay because it's very important to understand how this entire uh, you know system works in order to you know, move forward. So if you have any questions, stop me and you know ask anything. Um, so quickly going through the features of Power BI. So Power BI is very fast uh, as compared to some of the you know some of the BI tools which are traditional BI tools which are not very efficient and provide the uh, quick insights if the volume used to be increased uh, in GBs. But uh, Power BI handles the GBs of data very well, and uh, it, the interface is based on our as I already told that Microsoft Office application. So if we, when we will do the, the data cleaning part in Power BI, it is very similar to what we see in Excel, like filters available, that data transformation part that we do. So, so that, you know, users, because users are very familiar to the Excel application. So they get very you know, quickly adapt this version. So it's very, helpful for the users and it works for so many data sources. It also provides our uh, integration with R and Python, which is very useful for analytics and where uh, data science type of work that we do, the ETL work that is being done in the existing scripts for a business. So if they're using any existing scripts in their business, that can be optimized and that can be utilized. They don't need to change their existing systems in order to uh, see any insights in Power BI. The existing system can work as is and they can just extend their work to see that visualization of that, of that data science work. 
right? And par uh, Parbi has very useful DAX function functions mm -hmm. and measures, which we will discuss very much mm -hmm. in detail. So it's a very powerful language, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of functions are there. It is much more powerful than what we have in Tableau. So since you are learning Tableau as well, so you can side by side compare also some of the things that which is very strong in which area. In some area, Tableau is more powerful, but in some area, you will see that Power Bay is doing well. So uh, DAX is a very strong part of Power BI. And uh, Power BI has functional integration with Azure Cloud Platform, as I already discussed that it's moving towards, since we're moving towards cloud, it's very important to know that uh, Parve helps uh, works very well in the cloud environment. Okay, so uh, when we understand Power BI, Power BI has many products. So Power BI, the application which we use to develop reports is called Power BI Desktop which is a on-premises text uh, application, which we'll be using to develop reports. Uh, and Power BI service is the cloud-based platform, which is used to share our uh, reports, dashboards, and, you know, and we can, uh, we can see that who should get the access of those reports and who should not get. We can schedule our reports on, on the Power BI service app. And Power BI Mobile is used for uh, accessing and interacting with Power BI content that we that is you know same report can be available on mobile devices as well for in for the interaction purposes and for the quick insights. We can also customize the layout of mobile if we want a different layout for mobile and different one for desktop applications. We can do that. Okay, and Power BI Embedded. So uh, Power BI Embedded is uh, something that I pointed it out that developers, you know, software developers who design the applications can utilize the you know, visualizations in one of their section within that application. And it is very helpful for the users and, you know, uh, very integrated with the other parts of their business. So, if one business had their already have existing application, they don't need to navigate to another URL to see the uh, visualization. They can have everything in their own one single point as a as a link to you know the websites that they have. Okay, and there's a Power BI report server. So report server is a again a. Uh, application which is used to create, publish, and manage Power BI reports on their own server. So there are paginated reports being created by business. So there are specifically designed uh, reports which are different from the, uh, this uh, visualizations. So it's a different application that we need to install on our system. and uh, Power BI Premium. So Power BI Premium is a paid version of Power BI. Uh, so we have Power BI uh, Desktop, which is free of cost, which is, you know, uh, anything we can use for learning purposes. There's a Power BI Pro, which has some limitations. And then there's a Power BI Premium. So organizations mostly opt for um, Power BI Premium, which has all the, which have more, uh, flexibility towards the data that we can publish and you know uh, those dashboards and reports where we have a uh, lot of you know business need where data is really huge so increased storage capacity and more frequent data refreshes so in pro in power bi pro we have some restrictions on the data refresh but in Power BI Premium, we can have as many data, many data refreshes as we want. So, depends on the requirements company opt for Power BI Pro or Power BI Premium. Any questions so far? No, no, no question. OK, 
exactly so here's a quick look at the you know high high level uh, difference between uh, taboo and par bi so uh, as compared to uh, par bi taboo handles the large amount of data relatively easier than par bi so when it is uh, a comparison within these two tools uh, taboo is much more efficiently handling uh, the data when it's a huge uh, is a, it's a demand of huge data and if it's about the the capabilities and the features available it is power bi which is you know which has extensive uh, use and extensive uh, exposure to different types of features available so and tableau is slightly more expensive than power bi power bi is cost effective and Tableau has a higher license cost. So depending on the requirements and the data, company opt for uh, you know different BI tools. Uh, okay. We will see. It, although the image is not very clear, but yeah, there are actually four qu quadrants that we have here. So it, it says leaders. This one says challengers. So these are the ones, you know, where we say there, these BI, all these are BI tools available in the market. So here we see Microsoft Power BI, and uh, we see here as a Salesforce product Tableau. So we, as we can see that, you know, Tableau is very much competitive in, with Microsoft's product. But yeah, there are few more that are also very, you know, demanding in market like ClickView, SabView. So these are also being used. Okay. I think we have. So it's it's like uh, every quarter Gardner analysis is published based on all the BA applications are there. So from last few years, uh, Microsoft is leading. Before that, you know, uh, it was uh, Tableau was the leading product of the market because of the cost also and the you know cloud adaption it is becoming more uh, famous these days okay Okay, let me open a uh, Power BI report and navigate you through different elements within Power BI. As it's my personal laptop, so its configuration is not very good. That's why it's just showing a little slow. Otherwise, it's not that slow. So, uh, just show. You guys have seen that uh, our installation pop up that came up. So this dashboard, uh, you know, this report which was created used some scripts which were in R. 
right? Using that R script. So in yeah. order to use that, that we should have our R or you know Python script, whatever we're using in uh, in our report, should be installed on our system. Since it is not installed in my system, uh, I'll not be able to that particular uh, particular visualization in the in the report. Okay. Right. So if you want to use those features, we should have that language, uh, that particular tool uh, installed on our machine, right? So uh, as this is uh, this is a canvas where we uh, we bring in all the visualizations that we are seeing here. It's a uh, top menu where we have we can get data from different sources uh, which are available and you know these are the list of uh, you know data sources which are supported so we can see the list here and we can see that yeah this is supported this is not supported you can see okay and uh, here uh, all other we can enter data for quick analysis we have different few of them few of the data sources are are here for quick um, Quick uh, access are also mentioned here, and there are other few menu options are also available, which we will be using in the later section. It's an option to publish a report on the Power BI server, right? Yeah. And uh, here we have three tabs. One is report view, where we see the report, and here we have filter options which are static filter that we, or we can uh, make them dynamic based on the dynamic functionalities that we can use so here we are um, this tab is particularly for filters these are the different graphs which are available can we screen yes we can see your screen you can continue Okay, so here we have the visualization options available, which you can drag and use them for, you know, for different types of data that we have. Uh, it's a regional data, it can be, you know, map we can show. If it's a categorical data, we can use the bar graph. If it's a line, you know, some date is there, so we can use the line chart. So depending on the data, we can utilize these graphs for our reports. And, uh, also, we have this format option to format use different colors or different formatting options that are available. Different formatting options that we will be using while creating the result. Okay, and um, we have all the tables. So different data or tables that, that is there in the data source are all visible here. We can utilize these uh, different We'll be building a relationship between these uh, these different tables. That's how we'll be able to you know utilize them together in one single report. Okay, moving on to the tabular view. So for all the data, if you want to see what kind of uh, data values are there in each. For each field and what are blank values if there are in nulls nulls so how the data looks like in a tabular view so we can just move to, move to the you know tab table view and we can see that here for all the tables okay and there are a few more options available on the top to you know create column there is a customized column that you want to create you want to sort or you want to do different types of you know options available so we can we'll be doing that and we can see the data type also for each field because it's very important to know some of the some of the calculations and some of the uh, type of visualization that we will be using it's very important to understand the data so this tab is basically used to uh, once the data uh, relationships are done it's we should always see that how the data looks like if there is any issue or you know any nulls or any blanks in any of the uh, key uh, key fields important fields we can just always come and see here okay moving on to the model view 
which is the data model, which is you know very important part of building a report. So all the tables that are available in our you know data set. So here we can see that how the tables are connected with each other. Are there any relationships being, you know, because when we bring in the data, some of the relationships are automatically created by Power BI based on the field names and based on the, you know, names that are there and the type of data that is available in all these tables. But we should always come to this tab and we should always analyze and see the existing relationships and we should based on you know our understanding based on our requirements of the project we should create relationships here and the schema that we're going to build for our data uh, for, for the report let's say because we have star schema we have snowflake schema so it, it's very important to understand those concepts which we will be going through that how we can make sure that which schema we are following and if we are not able to follow that particular schema then how we can indirectly create those relationships to make sure that our data is correctly you know having relationships within all the tables that are which is required any questions so far no Okay, is it making sense? To... Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, now we'll be understanding one more important aspect of, you know, the building reports, which is also called this transform data. So when we, uh, when we receive data from, you know, different resources, it's never in the best form. Right, we always need to clean it up and you know do different types of merge or different types of uh, analysis that is required before we actually start building a report. So building a report is like very later stage of of building a dashboard. So I'll just uh, once I'm done with I'll just walk through this particular. Uh, yeah, I just explain how the end-to-end -end, uh, BI project works. Okay, so it has mirror. Just so it's really it's like a sample uh, report which I downloaded. It's not something that I build, so it has some error because the data is not downloaded uh, correctly in this one. So it's showing error. But yeah, in all these tabs, what we can, what we are trying to see here is the different data. Let's say if we have different uh, Excel sheets, or there's one as supply analytics is is coming from the SQL source, and the other one risk uh, data is coming from the Mm, from the Excel or the other one is coming from the CSV. So all these different types of data is, we can see it in the same format, same tabular format. Okay. I'll just fix it you know, offline and then we'll probably be able to see the tabular view here. So the uh, what I wanted to show you uh, that here we have the tabular view of the data and we have different options available to do the transformation and to, you know, we have this combined data combining. Let's say there are uh, monthly data, well, monthly data stored in three different Excel files. We have a, a team which maintains the monthly data of our sales uh, from for last three months. So they provide three different Excel, but we want to show a report in one view for all the three months. So uh, instead of joining them, we will do the union of these uh, three files. So union actually appends the data of three files to you know one below the other. Do you understand the difference between union and join? I'm sorry? 
Do you understand the difference between union and join? Have you covered joins? In the uh, I did that in SQL, but I have forgotten the details. Okay. I did that when I studied SQL back in the day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So joining data means we are just having two different data set, uh, one next to each other. The, from left to right and but uh, if you are uh, talking that we want the same fields are available in three different excel it's just that, that they are for different months so we want that one data should be appended to the other one so that you know oh. the, so union the, is just like uh, appending a data appending the data one below the other so it's combined data set available uh, which is appended to three. So we, when we work on the data sets and the different data sources, that we need to analyze what is required. Do we need to join that data? Do we need to append that data? Do we need to, you know, uh, create some the relationship between these data will work? So that type of, uh, you know, work will do. We'll be doing in the data sections when we'll do the data modeling part. There we will see that which works better in which type of scenario. And here we uh, also have, uh, you know, manage parameter option, which lets us create the parameters. So let's say we are uh, getting data from a SQL source where we have, you know, a SQL query. So uh, let's say select star from employee table where the, you know, employee joining date is greater than some value, some date values there. So the every time we will, you know, user run it, we, we can't just change, keep changing the data when we are running the dashboard daily. So here we can, you know, customize or we can provide a dynamic uh, parameters values here, which can be provided in the queries and which will automatically uh, trigger based on the parameter uh, setup that we will do here. Like the, you know, we want the last three months of, uh, join joiners so we would just take the date for formula and we will pass it on to that uh, uh, sql servers date field which will be covering in the, you know, when we will bring in the data different data source which was the overview session so i'm just you know going through the different components available in uh, power bi so just you know take a glimpse of these uh, options available here and uh, we can we can combine the data we can we have the option to append those queries like like i said that we, you know append query means it will append the data one next to each uh, one below the other one and we have the option to merge queries which says that you know we're joining the data to different types of data if we have the employee details, if we have the department details, we want to see the combined details where it has the employee and its department details combined. So that type of requirements can be, you know, uh, can be done here in uh, Power Query Editor. So this particular uh, com uh, canvas where we do all the data transformation is called Power Query Editor. So if we just okay. close this particular window, so if let me cancel it, we have the option to close and apply. So when we're uh, done making changes here, we can just do close and apply. You know, and we can just do the close also if you don't want to make any changes. And uh, those changes will be uh, reflected here in the Power BI. So, right? So whenever we do the transform data, there's a different uh, application opens up which is embedded within Power BI Desktop. And then when we do the apply changes, those changes are applied here. And will work, you know, for the data which is available in, in the desktop and canvas here. So, uh, sorry to interrupt, Shalika. So, can you just explain more about transform data? What exactly do we mean by transform? So, is it related to the data transformation you're talking about? 
Right. So it says here transform data. It is actually it is it actually means the transforming the data. So when we uh, bring in the data from different sources, then uh, before we start building our reports, we do the data cleaning, data transformation, and uh, all the different steps required before we the data is ready for the reporting. Okay. Okay, maybe the data is clean. We don't. Yeah. So maybe the data is clean. We don't need to do any data transformation. But yeah, we need to analyze and we need to review all the uh, data fields and we need to make sure that data it is uh, data is looking good uh, to you know uh, for the reporting purpose. Okay. So if I'm not right, I can say that that uh, data transformation here means that while we'll be getting the data from different data sources and if the data is not organized or if some if we have some null values so we can handle the null values basically we can uh, we can clean the data we can uh, we can uh, do the merging also and uh, we can uh, uh, data cleansing is there data data massaging i can say we we'll massage the data to 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 prepare the data to convert the data in a prescribed format so that we can uh, Quickly create dashboards uh, using that uh, using that data, right? Right, right. So, few examples like we do the data split. Let's say there are uh, there is a gender uh, field there, which says you know, uh, uh, I would say uh, split like date and time. So we just want the date. We can just change it to that. If the first name and last name is combined, but we want just first name in the in the you know report so we can just do all those type of changes as per the report design right. those okay changes. and you um, convert yeah th there is a you know there is a question i think uh you know that we would have to discover that maybe when we start to do some practice but when it comes to data transformation, mm -hmm. sometimes you have a data, you know, let's assume that the the column names are okay and that there are no nulls, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, it, like there are no visible, let me put it this way, there are no visible anomalies on the data uh mm -hmm. you know when you import it but mm -hmm. how do you because you expect a certain specific output how can we be sure that the data that we have is uh accurately normalized in order to give us the perfect output that we want given that any um any mismatch of values in our data will produce you know significant discrepancies in the results okay yeah so uh, before we start on you know uh, i wanted to give you the overview of how the power bi uh, or any bi uh, project works so before we start on actually uh, building a report or uh, you know working directly on Power BI desktop, it is uh, we do the requirement sessions. We do the understanding of the data before this part begins. So in that those sessions, we do you know the detailed analysis of all the important fields which are going to be used in the in the report because it can really uh, change uh, values as you said we uh, we cannot usually see that there are you know issues with the data it looks good to us mm -hmm. but they can be uh, it can affect uh, the calculation or it can affect those graphs values it can affect those business decisions being taken so it's very important for us as a bi analyst to understand the data so 6 to 70 percent of the time is taken is to understand the data and to prepare the data it's just dragging and dropping and preparing the visualization is not a rocket science. It, 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 is, it can be done very easily as Microsoft has provided very easy to build tools available here. The main part of a data analyst is to understand and you know the data thoroughly. So in those uh, uh, understanding, we find out. And uh, when we 
see that you know for example there is a column available as a um, we understand from the business that there is a id field which is a uh, primary key right and there are few more the combination of few fields is a is a key it should always be available in the data but so when we see that data in our you know uh, in the data transformation page we see few nulls well available there we get back to the business that you know the, there are nulls in the data so they will fix the uh, you know data things but we uh, we need to come up with those questions that the data doesn't look good to us. But yeah, if there are data issues, which is uh, from the business side, for, uh, uh, then in, in those scenarios, it is up to business that how they want to present the data. If there are uh, incorrect values being shown to the business, but that is not because of you know our uh, fault, like the numerical values, which if there are uh, 10 measures should be should be shown there are just five is being shown in the numerical value but that is not something that we can see that it, it is incorrect it is the team that was working and preparing those data so we can control based on the requirements that we get we cannot control the things that are not being discussed in the requirements or are not is something that is the scope of the report Okay. So we get the data from some other sources. So based on that only, we we noted down all the requirements and work on those requirements accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. 